Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and today we're back at it again with one of these kind of showdown tests of cheap stuff from the internet and today we're taking a look at 10 cheap low cost SD cards that you can pick up from Amazon. So a lot of people when they buy themselves a dash cam, a camera, like a little GoPro or even if they get themselves a new phone with micro SD expansion, a lot of people, myself included, are very much tempted to go ahead and buy those cheap little SD cards that you see online. They're cheap, they've got like 32 gigs on them, 64 in some cases and they supposedly get the job done. They're not really always from the biggest manufacturers, but hey, 32 gigs for like $7, it's pretty hard to argue with. I mean, it wasn't that long ago when you were buying 32 gig cards for like 50 or $100, so times definitely have changed uh, in the storage world, especially in the micro SD card world. So basically, it was pretty simple. I jumped on Amazon, bought 10 micro SD cards for $7 or less, all in 32 gigabyte trim so we could compare across all of them and we bought them to put them to the test. So let's go ahead and see what I actually went ahead and bought. So I just sorted from most popular, kicking things off with the Fatty Dove Racing 32 gigabyte micro SD card. This is supposedly UHS-1 with speeds up to 30 megabytes per second on the right side. We've also too picked up the Londisk 32 gigabyte card with performance of up to 90 megabytes per second reads and 30 on the rights. We've got the Ago 32 gigabyte card with a mind blowing 20 megabyte per second writes and uh, oof, 40 on the reads. We've also too picked up the Alert Seal 32 gigabyte, 40 megabytes per second by 20 megabytes per second on the reads and writes respective. Although one thing about this one is it's kind of weird sort of advertising. It's got like animals, like what is this? Anyway, point being moving on, uh, we also too grabbed ourselves the Brave Eagle 32 gigabyte, which has no claimed specs or speeds or anything like that. Doesn't even have a website, it's just on Amazon. So, got that one as well. And uh, also too, we grabbed ourselves the Amplim 32 gigabyte SD card with a rated uh, U1 speed, although it just is listed as the fastest U1 card. So again, no real specs there. I also too grabbed the Mengimi 32 gigabyte card again. Uh, anyway, the Gigastone full HD video card, 32 gig. We also grabbed the J Collie 32 gigabyte TF card, which is really not getting my hopes up. And to round out our top 10, I also too picked up the SanDisk Ultra 32 gigabyte UHS-1 card, offering speeds up to 95 megabytes per second, which actually meets some of those UHS standards, and more importantly, is made by a major manufacturer. Now, I picked up the uh, SanDisk card just for a bit of um, comparison, because that card itself is also to coming in about the $7 price point. So let's have a look at these no names versus a SanDisk card. Now, yes, don't get me wrong. There's other options out there for a couple dollars more, even a dollar more. You can get things from Samsung, Patriot, uh, well, what used to be Lexar, but has now changed. Anyway, point being, there are a lot of other options out there. I just picked up these cards here today because they were kind of optioned up near the top of Amazon's top list. So I just went ahead and grabbed them. Now, you may have noticed a couple of those cards we didn't have any B-roll of, and that is because they never arrived. I bought them and they just never showed up. Um, I never got a shipping label, I never got tracking, anything like that. Um, they just never arrived. And then when I contacted the seller after like a month, or actually no, three weeks, um, they were like, don't know and then they never showed up. Thankfully, Amazon stepped in and I did get my money back, but it's one thing that you do want to take into consideration when you are purchasing these cheap cards, and that is why I still kept them in these tests right here. Um, actually receiving the damn unit is something you really need to consider when you are buying cheaper cards. But now that we've actually got what's left of actually showing up, let's jump into some actual testing. After we take a look at our first round graph right here, we already get some fails, but First thing we need to do is, do they even work? Again, we are talking about brands that we haven't really heard of before. I mean, yes, in some markets you may have heard of Fatty Dove Racing. I'm not really too sure there, but my point being, do they even work out of the box? So plugging them in, formatting them as just general standard SD cards, whether they'll be XFAT or whatever you need to go ahead and do. We went ahead and ran the test right here, and I did find that the Ago card 
just shows up as 121 megabytes. Um, I thought this might be an issue with the card as I have had SD cards go into uh, write protection mode where you can read off all your data and you just can't write to it. So I thought, hey, maybe this card's a little bit faulty. I tried a bunch of CMD commands and formats and everything and it just didn't work. Went back to the seller, got a replacement and still only 121 megs. So $7 down the drain, probably not the best option right there. But the rest of the cards, whether it be the SanDisk or the Brave Eagle, uh, they all went ahead and formatted up just fine and we could go ahead and put data onto it, which means moving into test number two. So test number two is all about speed testing because these guys come out with claims that kind of all over the shot. I mean, some of them are claiming 20 megs and the others are 95. We need to actually run some baselines. So going ahead and running them all through, as we can see, uh, well, having a look at these crystal disc marks, they're um, pretty much all in the same league of each other. They're all kind of about the same set of numbers here. However, there was one particular standout, which was the Brave Eagle, which got a sick 93 megabytes per second reads but then just crumbled when it came to the rights department. It was really, really disappointing. Now, one thing you do want to take into consideration when buying an SD card is chances are you're going to be doing a lot of writing to it because it's in a camera or even a smartphone that would be writing data to it. So not only are your reads going to be really important, but also to your write numbers are very important here. And this guy, whilst it was pretty decent in the reads, just fell over completely in the right. All in all, looking through these uh, crystal disc marks, they don't come back too badly here. And you could easily take photos in some 1080p uh, low megabit per second uh, video and be pretty much good to go here. So jumping into test number three, can they actually hold 32 gigabytes? Crystal Disk Mark shows that we can read and write from them not too badly in some cases, but can we actually store 32 gigs of storage on these guys? Now, if you've been on the internet for any amount of time, chances are you've seen those like four terabyte, one terabyte, two terabyte little USB memory sticks that claim to have all this storage. They're like eight, 10, even 20 bucks in some cases. They're really cheap and they just don't have any storage on them. They're actually like four gig little memory sticks that someone's done a quick little software trick on them and then they don't actually do anything. When you write data to them, it'll write four gigs and once it gets over four gigs, it'll start to overwrite previous data and things go really, really badly. So in our testing right here, I grabbed 32, actually 31 and a half uh, gigs of uh, files that were just standard video files and I went ahead and wrote them to the SD cards and playing them back, well, actually all of them are 32 gigs in fact. So it was nice to see that our 32 gig cards could hold 32 gigs of storage. Point being, none of these particular ones we have here today are a scam, so uh, they get a bit of a pass on this test. Which brings us into test number four, and that is endurance. We've done the speed test, we can actually write stuff to it, but how long are these things actually going to last? So for this particular test, I went ahead and wrote a minimum of one terabyte worth of data to these cards. Now, yes, one terabyte isn't exactly a whole lot. It's like 30 some hours of 1080p video. Uh, Definitely in the lifespan of these cards, you could probably expect two, three, four, even five times, depending on what your use case is. Heck, if you're throwing it in something like a dash cam, you're probably going to be like 20xing this kind of number here. But if it can't meet a minimum of one terabyte written to these cards, it's probably not much point buying it. So in this particular test, I fired up Anvil and we went ahead and just ran the stress test on these particular cards. And I'm happy to report back all of them lasted through the endurance testing. Absolutely no problems. Now, you may notice some cards did write a little bit more. Um, that's just because Anvil, you hit go and then you have to hit stop when you want it to stop. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell, you can't dial in a number, but I could be completely wrong. Um, but I just hit go and then came back roughly 24 hours later, hit stop, and that was our about one terabyte mark. All of them wrote over one terabyte. So it was really good to see that, in fact, we can store stuff on it, we can read and write at okay speeds in some particular cases, but more importantly, you're gonna be able to actually use it for a little bit of time. Now, don't get me wrong, you're not gonna be throwing a terabyte of data on these cards really, really quickly because they are only 32 gig, but hey, it is possible to do it, so that isn't too bad. Test number five. Pretty simple, we've just gone ahead and run the Anvil test and if you've used a flash media device, chances are you know as the life goes on, the performance does go down. That's just how flash degrades. So after writing one terabyte, what kind of performance numbers do we get here? And well, 
taking a look at all the crystal disc marks versus the original crystal disc marks it's going to be a quite a few screens to flick through right here but taking a look and actually comparing them it wasn't exactly too bad none of the cards fell out and went to like one megabyte per second or even went into a right protection mode so it was really good to see that we could still use them even after that and you might be surprised that I'm actually happy that we can do that but Trust me, I've used some pretty cheap flash memory modules and um, I've had cards in the past go for 500 gigs and just completely fall off the cliff right here. So it's good to see that at least the popular stuff on Amazon can actually do some of the work you might be expecting of these particular cards. Now up until now all the tests that we've been doing have kind of been theoretical and synthetic. They've all been in controlled environments so we could easily compare them across all the different numbers here. They're on control systems, every card was tested in the same card reader, same computer, same OS, no other updates, everything was nice and controlled. But what about the real world? What if we just take these cards, throw them in the camera and actually go ahead and use them? And so that's exactly what I did. I grabbed my Panasonic J H5 with a little uh, micro SD card adapter that surprisingly all of them came with one which was really nice to see. Put it in the lowest 1080p lowest bitrate mode because this thing can throw out some really big files something to the tune of like 50 megabytes per second which doesn't sound like a lot but to get an SD card that can sustain that oh it's really expensive and um yeah, had to buy a few of them to make these videos. But anyway, point being, I went ahead and threw it on the lowest quality 1080p, the lowest of the lowest, and we could indeed write video to them. Although some of them, such as the Brave Eagle, just couldn't cut the mustard in this particular case where it just buffered and then went ahead and ran out of uh, ability to record video. So in some cases, uh, depends on your use case and depends on the card. There are much better options out there than some of the cheap ones we did test here, as we can see in our test results right here. Using them in a camera was, again, totally usable, and most importantly, using them in something like a smartphone. All of them across the board showed up, were detected, and I could save stuff to it. I could use my smartphone to take photos and save to that card. I could save video to it again. 4K and high bitrate really fell off the cliff, but it was possible with lower bit rates and lower quality images. Uh, loading apps onto it again, reading from it was perfectly fine in just about most cases. However, writing to those cards, it wasn't something that I could really easily measure, but it just had that slow kind of feel and it was just unfortunate right there. Uh, if you're planning on using something like in a dash cam, you will need to take into consideration the bit rate that the dash cam does record at. But as long as those cards can sustain the speeds that your dash cam runs at, again, no problems right there. So that then brings us to the conclusion of these tests right here. What should I go ahead and buy if I'm buying something cheap for storage off of Amazon? And the answer unsurprisingly, is the named brand Sandisk card. I didn't really touch on it too much because it just did everything expected. Uh, it recorded videos, it blasted through all the tests, and it is backed up by a major manufacturer. And the fact that it's only $7, along with just about all these other cards that are either $6 to $7, there's really no value in buying these other lesser known brand uh, manufactured drives. Now, yes, there are some other ones out there, for example, long disc um, that are a little bit more popular in the Chinese markets, but here in sort of Australia, something like a SanDisk or a Samsung or even a Patriot or even an Angelbird is going to be a much better option in these particular uh, use cases right here. Just because you've got a big manufacturer behind it, so if something does go wrong, you can go ahead and get support. Yes, these things are only like $7, so if it goes ahead and dies, it's really not the end of the world. But do remember at the end of the day, you are storing your data on it. So the last thing you want to do is cheap out and buy some cheapo drive that you got on a discount and then in a year time it dies with all your data on it and there's no backups and things do go downhill really really fast so for me out of all these cards right here I'm going to go ahead and take the SanDisk drive. If I had even $1 more, there's other options like from the likes of Samsung again and all the other brands that I did mention um, that are also two great options. But out of the testing here, I'm going to go SanDisk. But if you sort of chop SanDisk out, what should we go ahead and go with? Well, it's really a hard answer here because each drive, whilst it had its upsides, did also to have its downsides. I guess if we look at our graph right here, we can kind of choose, well the one that had the best result, but at the same time, again, we do need to keep in mind that just because it's good on paper may not necessarily mean the overall experience is good. Again, that is why we did keep those uh, drives that never showed up in these particular tests, because if you can't even get the damn thing, you can't even use it. So that is one thing that we do want to go ahead and use right here. So unsurprising to no one, 
by the name brand card. But with that being said, I'll leave all the SD cards that we did check out here today down in that description box along with things like the adapters that I use for testing and the little SD uh, adapter to full size SD that I also to use again for testing all down in that description box. And guys, let me know down in that comment section, have you picked up one of these cheaper, low cost kind of cards? Has it, has it sort of lasted you for a while or is it been problematic? Do let me know down in that comment section. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.